HSC option two, sport and physical activity in Australian society. This is key idea one, how have meanings about sport and physical activity changed over time? We're starting off with dot point one. Um, and in, in all of these recordings, I'm going to focus on the right hand side of the syllabus and with a focus on the actual questions that it asks of you. Um, this dot point starts off by and with a big question here is compare the nature of sport in the 19th century with sport in today's society and then consider these three questions. But before we get to those three questions, um, we want to have a quick look at what, how has it mainly changed? What has been the big change in sport from the 19th century to today? Now, just by looking at these photos, you'll be able to pick up pretty quickly that the biggest change in sport today has been the dollars that has come into sport. In fact, um, it'd be great to use some syllabus terminology that comes up later on, that sport has become a big business. That has been the biggest change from sport in the 19th century to sport today. Okay, so the first question, how have the meanings of amateur and professional sport changed? This comes under this second dash point um, over here on the left hand side of the syllabus. You have to have an understanding or the definition of what it is to be an amateur or professional sportsman. To be an amateur sportsman, you played sport with no financial reward whatsoever. You couldn't earn prize money, you couldn't earn sponsorship. In fact, as soon as you received any sort of financial reward at all for playing sport, you lost your amateur status for life. Um, as an amateur, you could play in professional competitions, it's just that you could not be rewarded for doing so. Um, the definition for a professional sportsman is that you are free to earn as much money as possible from playing sport. So you are able to earn prize money and sponsorship, um, but as a professional sportsman, you could not play in amateur competitions. So what did it mean to be an amateur sportsman or a professional sportsman in the 1900s? Well, for an amateur sportsman, you were fairly much either a wealthy or from the upper class if you were an amateur sportsman. It was just really difficult for the poor or lower class to be an amateur sportsman because they just couldn't um, afford to train or give up their income to be able to be an amateur sportsman. Amateur sports people were considered to be the far more prestigious of the two. Um, they, amateur sport received all the media attention. As an amateur sportsman, you played for the enjoyment only. You did not play to receive any sort of financial reward. Um, as an amateur sportsman, you were considered to embrace the values of fair play. Now, when talking about fair play, this first dash point of the syllabus comes up, links with manliness and also character. Now, when describing character here, there is this term you've probably heard me um, talk about quite a bit. It's called muscular Christianity. And that means you played sport with uh, this idea of fair play and values in mind. Um, as a professional sportsman in the 1900s, you were either generally speaking from the poor or lower class. Um, it wasn't as well respected as amateur sport. You played to be rewarded. You played professional sport to earn money. It was considered to be open to corruption and bribery and therefore um, it's sort of the opposite of these syllabus points over here. Um, you were probably considered not to be this idea of uh, being a muscular Christian if you played professional sport. Um, the dominant sport in professional, the two dominant sports for professionals in the 1900s were rugby league and boxing, while the dominant sports in the 1900s for amateurs were cricket, tennis and golf. So how does it look today? Well, an amateur sportsman receives little or no media attention. There's still considered some honour in winning amateur competitions. It's just that the media doesn't report on it. The two dominant amateur sports today are boxing and, and golf, although at an amateur level, they are still not as uh, big as professional boxing and golf. Um, as an amateur, you still play for the enjoyment only, while today, amateur sport is open to all classes, both the upper and lower class. While today, for professional sportsmen, it dominates the media. Um, it's considered to be the far more prestigious of the two. Um, it's still open to corruption and cheating, as you can see from the drug scandals that um, um, uh, are proving a problem for most sports today. The dominant sports for professional sports in Australia today are cricket, rugby league, AFL and soccer. As a professional sportsman, you play for the financial reward and it's open to all classes. 
So the question, how have the meanings of amateur and professional sport changed? Well, in the 1900s, there was a distinct class divide. Um, the wealthy upper class were the amateur and the lower class were the professional sportsmen. Today, there is no such class divide. Um, either class can either be an amateur or professional sportsman today. In the 1900s, amateur sport was considered the most dominant of the two. Today, that's completely turned around where professional sport is by far the most dominant and far the most popular of the two. Um, and this point here is it's interesting to remember. In the early Olympics, you had to be an amateur to compete. No professional sportsmen were allowed to participate at the Olympics. While today, that's changed as well. Uh, where the only sport that it's kept its amateur status today is boxing. No professional boxers are allowed to compete at the Olympics, but for every other sport, professionals are able to compete. So to answer this question, you have to have an understanding of what it means to be an amateur and professional sportsman. You have to have an understanding of how it has changed from the 1900s to what it looks like today. And to help you do that, if you could write about these three points, it would help set up your answer perfectly. Um, the difference in the class divide, how, uh, which is now more dominant of the two from the 1900s to today, and how in the Olympics that um, at one point in time you had to be an amateur to compete, while well, that has changed today quite drastically.